All right. If it's Tuesday, that means it is time for Comic Book School Live, something that you wait all week for. My name is Buddy Scalera, and I am going to bring my hooded friend on, Mike <laughs> Nitha Solo. Mike, why are we wearing hoods tonight? Ah, uh, because it's cold in California, and I knew oh, it's cold in California. Warm. Oh, yeah. all right. I wasn't it's sure. Actually, what. it's actually getting getting too hot with this thing on, so I'm probably gonna. Have to take it <laughs> yeah, it looks very warm. <laughs> uh, so you're dialing in from California, Mike. What yes. part of California? Uh, Los Angeles. Mm. Same place as always. Yep, yep. And it's uh, it's been rainy here the last couple of days. That is very strange for California, huh? Super rainy, super flooding. Everything. It's crazy. Flooding. All right. Yeah. Well, that's not good. In California. In California. Can you still see me? Because I seem I, to have lost the screen. There we I go. Can, I can still see you. You can still see me. I'm working off a laptop right now, so I'm I'm a little discombobulated. Uh, I brought bought this wonderful new Dell desktop, which went ahead and just uh, doesn't work on me anymore. Oh, boy. So I had to mail it to Texas, somewhere, I think, Dallas, which is so convenient. They say, oh, it would be only... Uh, only six to ten working days. I'm like six to ten working days. Couldn't you just take it to a repair shop down the street? No, it's still under warranty. Uh, so um, I, uh, yeah. So I'm working off an old laptop. But tonight, Mike, even though we're working off an old laptop, we still have a chock full of packed show for people tonight. I like chock full of stuff. And you, you actually came prepared. You're, uh, you're ready. I, and did. I, I am here. fully prepared this week. It might be the last week, but I am fully prepared. <laughs> it might be the last. <laughs> Why? Why would it be? Well, no, because uh, you know, how often am I prepared for these things? I, I don't know. Not, not, not as not often, often as you'd like, all. right? This will be the, the first and the last prepared week. I'll say. Yeah, oh, all right. Well, Possibly. so Mike, last week, um, people seem to really like last week we covered, um, this topic of how to 2023 uh, yep. and we are, we are moving along and we talk to people about setting smart goals. Uh, we'll touch on that tonight. Um, but tonight we're going to be talking about why I asked all of you to go out and buy notebooks. Mike, did you buy your notebooks? Do you have notebooks? I have my notebooks. You have your notebooks. Good. I, and you even got a spiral bound. And yeah. That's, I took, uh, I took your, your lead on that one and said spiral. That is super cool. So tonight, Mike, uh, for the creators who are out there, uh, we talk about the craft and business of making comics. And tonight we will be talking about how to document your goals. I just, I, I, I want you to know that this was not a mistake. So 2023 was Superman looking over his shoulder. And now we have the monkey at the <laughs> typewriter looking over his shoulder, looking a little anxious. Uh, do you know the reference to the monkey at the typewriter, Mike? Uh, I believe it's, if you put like a thousand monkeys at a thousand typewriters for a thousand years, one of them will type Shakespeare's works or something like that. That is exactly right. And the probability how infinitesimally small <laughs> is still possible to happen. Uh, so that was a cover from uh, an issue of Animal Man, which I've uh, properly credited uh, with this and other things. Uh, we will include it in the show notes where you can find some of these things. Uh, thank you, Vince. I have wanted a red hoodie of this nature for a long, long time. My wife gave it to me for Christmas and I am terribly happy with it. So I am wearing it here uh, to do my favorite thing for every Tuesday. It is a great hoodie. It is a great hoodie. Here is Mary Ann who says, hey, hey, hey. <laughs> hey, hey, hey. Hey, hey, hey. Hey, hey, hey. She, and it sounds like she said it fast like that, right? To do yeah. it again, Mike. Hey, hey, hey. Hey, hey, hey. I got my three. Good, Glenn. And has it finally written War and Peace? I think he's talking about the monkey. <laughs> or Shakespeare. And I think it was actually supposed to be Shakespeare that that he would eventually. He spelled that. I think he spelled that wrong. I, I think he did. The chips were right beneath the planet. Oh, yeah. that would be good. Yes, they should have said that. I enjoyed all the Apes movies, no matter how bad they were. I enjoyed <laughs> all of them. It was the worst. It was the blurst of times. Is that a Simpsons reference? I'm, I'm guessing that's a Simpsons reference. All right. you. I figured you would know it. So tonight we got a lot to do, Mike, and we have your trivia, which I've uh, I've spruced up a, a trivia slide as well. I think the designers in the audience will uh, find themselves. Uh, How long did you spend on it? Uh, more time than I should have. And um, I will tell you, though, I think it's coming out pretty good. All right. Fancy, I don't think fancy. any of our designers would agree. 
<laughs> but I would agree. Okay, so here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna share how to 2023 part two. Now you enjoyed the first one, Mike, because we I did some really core things that are helpful to us. It was it was a Simpsons reference. Oh God, here we go. Yeah, see, she's looking at my designs and thinking they're not going to be good, and she's right. <laughs> Redheaded Ed is right again. <laughs> So we're going to try to get Redheaded Ed back up on the show again. I, I I miss having her on, and I'm looking for an excuse to have her come on. What do you think, Mike? I think that's a good idea. That's a good idea. She's doing. I always like seeing Redheaded Ed, the alley. Okay, so how to document your goals for your comic book career. Actually, uh, Vince noted, Vince, our motion graphics artist, said that head graphic is redheaded headed approved. It is indeed not. <laughs> not okay snicker you even threw a snicker in there because he knows it's not all right so how to document your goals you know like a lot of things that people don't learn are follow-up skills documentation project management right that's probably a big part of what you do in the television business am i right follow up yes follow yeah. but but also project management i'm sure when you were working on a uh, a television show as you are want to do in order to get paid there's a yeah. project manager right yeah what yeah i guess you gotta do manager. all the whole you gotta do the whole development thing and work with other writers and producers and all that stuff yeah i guess I suppose so in the television world who's the person who runs the day-to-day -day? uh you mean like on the the show that you're being hired for on i've never been hired on a show ever who runs the, <laughs> well who i runs mean if if you're talking about just the general show that's already going to be like put on the air, it's the showrunner. And that's just the, <laughs> that's a creative name. Who yeah. runs the show? Showrunner. <laughs> showrunner. <laughs> they didn't need to think too hard on that one. Yeah. Yeah. That's it, just the person who kind of lays out what the, the series is going to be and, you know, what direction it's going in, things like all that. All right. So in corporate America, we usually will have uh, program owners, project managers. There's any number of people, there's any number of ways to document. Uh, big goals, little goals. But one of the things that we are going to do tonight is, um, what's a producer, Mike? No one really knows what a producer is. <laughs> they're, they're usually the money behind things. Oh, all right. Yeah. Okay, that's fair. And they they do, you know, depending on who they are and how big they are, they do kind of organize, kind of get things together. Creative director, That's that's usually the title that's shown around showrunner you yell at interns more because you don't pay the interns <laughs> you know they'll take guff <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. and is guff a thing can you go to the store and buy some guff and then you can buy guff? lots of guff <laughs> yeah the richer you get the more <laughs> guff you can hand out the more guff you can buy and the more you can hand out we have to look we have to do the origins of the word guff because <laughs> there must be some origins okay so since you often don't learn this uh, in school, honestly, um, and you learn it in the workplace organically, I will tell you that what we're about to look at tonight, um, I learned by going to conference uh, many years into my career. I was listening to a very successful um, creator who I respect very much, and uh, he gave me these uh, these ideas, and then I've adapted them uh, for my needs. So uh, real quick. Today, tonight, we'll review SMART goals. We'll write down six personal goals. We'll have a top 10. And then I'll teach you how to say no, Mike. Yes, please do, because I don't I don't know if I can do that. You don't know if you can do that. Okay. So, all right. Oh, wait. So, um, Redheaded Ad actually does know a little bit about production. Produces the person who noodles everything when a decision is finally made. LOL. Noodles. Noodle. Is that's, that a verb? That's a technical term. Noodling. <laughs> that's a technical. Don't mess with those technical terms. <laughs> All right. So um, we go here and we say, okay, first, I can never find it because I'm working off of two different computers. So last week we talked about this. I just want to remind us that SMART is an acronym. Mike, you want to go through these for us? Uh, sure. Specific. Got to be specific in your goal, what you want. Exactly. Not willy nilly flighty, butterfly-ish type of things. Measurable. It's got to be a measurable goal. 
these are very easy to go through because they basically say exactly what they are. All right. So we'll just skip that because it <laughs> got dull fast. Yeah. Maryam is jumping to the end. She's the person that goes to the movie and goes, did you know that Darth was Luke's father? And you're like, uh, oh, I haven't seen it yet. <sighs> Rosebud's a sled, not Mike. <laughs> what? 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 I'm terrible that way. Okay. <laughs> All right, so with your small notebook, let me see your small notebook. All right, this is your small notebook. This is my small notebook. How much did that notebook uh, set you back, Mike? I don't know, like a dollar or something? Dollar. Maybe. A dollar. Okay. Um, they are uh, very inexpensive. I uh, yeah. bought this in a pack. Actually, I got this for free. I lied. Um, but uh, I really love the shiny color. Do you buy yours because you like the color red? I bought mine because I like the color red, and it fits in my pocket. Okay, so I'm going to ask you and everyone else to open to, and I'm not going to show you mine because mine are actually written in here um, because I don't think that's uh, fair. So you're going to open to an early page and at the top right here, Mike, right at the top on the right hand side of the page, the right hand page, if you're writing, you're going to write the word financial. Financial. Then you're going to turn the page at the top of the page. You don't have to look up. You're going to write family. Then you're going to turn the page and you're going to write spiritual. Oh, boy. Then you're going to turn the page. You're going to write mental. Oh, that's a bad one. <laughs> then you're going to write, turn the page. You're going to write physical. And uh, one more time, you're going to turn the page and you're going to write philanthropic. Now, those are six goals. This is your list. This is this is who you want to work to be in 2023. Everybody should um, follow this along. We'll have this in the show notes. I did not make this up. Apparently, this is a, a well-worn list. I don't even know who to credit, but I did see it spoken by somebody named Joe Polizzi. So special thanks to Joe Polizzi. Now, um, Joe Polizzi, Mike, uh, reviews this every single day. And what he does is he looks at these six items. Now, I look at them approximately once a month. But what you do is you remind yourself of what your expectation is for you. So from a financial perspective, the more specific you can become, the better you will help to reach your goals. So, for example... Your financial goals may be in 2023 to make 10% more than you made last year. Okay. From the family perspective, you might put that you will spend more time and quality time and devices downtime with your family, right? Spiritual. Now, some of us believe in a higher being. Some of us have a name for that higher being. Some of us just believe in the energy of the earth. Whatever it is, it is yours. But whatever you would like to achieve, if that is finding inner peace more frequently, mm -hmm. if you would like to be somebody who um, brings down your blood pressure through meditation, whatever it is, that is the right answer. Now, remember, you're going to be writing these down in the present tense so like i want or i i have is it i have or i want i am i am working toward a goal of earning 10 percent more in my salary this year that might mean a job hop i am spending more time with my family because that is my priority i am speaking to a higher being because i believe the following and you keep it pretty short now mental um, listen, the, the pandemic has uh, taken all of us for a, a wild loop. Um, worrying about your mental health is just as important as worrying about your physical health. Um, but both of them are tied together. So when you start to think about what am I doing with my mental health in 2023, that is what you are doing. And, and this is not like any comic book specific thing. These are literally who you want to be because you will not be able to make comics if you're not in a good place. Right, Mike? True. Very true. All right. Physical. Uh, you probably don't write down lose weight. Uh, I probably <laughs> do every year. Um, but talking about I am 
exercising at least twice a week. I am working toward a more balanced weight. I am whatever it is. And then philanthropic. Um, Mike, we, we both do this for philanthropic purposes. We enjoy doing it, um, but it is work. And part of our philanthropic goal is to uh, share what we have been the beneficiaries of, right? I mean, we've been, we've, we lucked into some good stuff, right? Yes. Early in our career. Uh, so we give back and that is what we'll be writing down. So real quick, just going to come back. Do you think you're prepared to be able to address these items? Um, mostly. Mostly. What, 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 what one scares you? Spiritual? What, what scares you? Well, uh, mental, maybe. That would be the one that I'd have to really think about. Like, you know, I could, I could tie that one. Like you said, um, uh, for spiritual, like, uh, calmer self something like that like you more, could not be more calm more at ease <laughs> <laughs> you could not be more at ease but something like that like that i would kind of put into like the mental thing like i would rather be very you know uh more much more at ease and more relaxed so i mean i don't i guess uh, maybe maybe the spiritual one is confusing me like what would i write down for a spiritual thing i am now, here's the hack, Mike. Uh, I cheated a little bit. I was taking it as a class, uh, as part of uh, a workshop. I will provide a link to that workshop so that you can see what Joe Polizzi's written down. Uh, but there's this amazing tool that indexes all of the websites in the world. Uh, and you can Google something. What? You could Google. You could Google, you could Google something as an old <laughs> reference there. Um <laughs> Um, but what you want to do, Mike, is look around, get some ideas. But this is an important aspect. Knowing who you want to be and how to take care of yourself will help you get to the goals. And we're about to get to the uh, like fun comic booky part. But I did want to talk about something that I have found to be effective for me personally and professionally. This is the first one I had ever done. I still have the original. Uh, but I go back every year and I update it and I look at the old ones. I look at the current ones and I do try to look at it at least once a month. And I do mark my calendar, Google calendar to remind me to look at these things. I know nerdy, 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 but it is helpful. Now, now you write them down and then you look at them and do you evaluate your progress? Like I, I have been doing this or I'm moving toward that or I'm in that direction uh, Mike, I love that question because it leads directly into the next section that we're about to talk about You're welcome. right now. Yeah, you didn't. We didn't even plan that. Just <laughs> kind of came out that way. Okay. So you, you make this list. It's really important. People, you have to write these things down. I know it sounds weird, but if Mike Fasolo is able to get his, his self out the door to go get a small notebook, you can too. Even Mike is able to do that. Okay. So now you're going to make a top 10 list. Uh, hold, hold on. Miriam said, like, is there chart? Yeah, Mike, like, is there chart? Yeah, exactly. Chart. Well, this is the, this is going to work toward your chart. So <clears throat> in this notebook, second notebook. Spiral. Spiral. On the first page, not going to take out mine because I've literally started to write my 10 down. You will take 10 items, projects that can be tied back to smart goals that you want to achieve. 10 projects, just you write them down. So for us, we have this one project and the project cannot be that it will be published, but rather that we will complete the things that are within our reach to complete. Remember from last week, we can't say, oh, I'm going to get something published by Marvel Comics. No, but you can get your proposal in. You might not be able to get something published by DC Comics, but you know what? You can write the eight page backup as a goal for yourself. Now you're going to just write down top 10, write them down, look at them. Ready, Mike? And then yep. in the next step, you got your 10. And you're going to cross five off the list. What? Because you're so full of malarkey, you were not <laughs> going to get 10 items done, right? The majority of you did not get the majority of your goals done last year. So by starting with 10, it doesn't mean you're not going to do it. 
But this year, you're going to start by being realistic. What do you think of that, Mike? I think that's actually a good idea. Doesn't mean you have to stop doing those things. But like getting those five things done is what you should be working toward this year. That was a funny trick, huh, Mike? That was was a good trick. You you pulled the wool over my eyes. I did. There's wool pulled. And I I think pragmatically, Mike, you can't do 10 things well in this calendar year because almost nobody who's on this show uh, is doing this full time. Maybe there's some people who are doing being creators, but like this is all side hustle. Yeah. Right. This is all side hustle. And I've written down the goals for comic book school and for comic book publishing. And not too long ago, you were like, when are we going to be done with that proposal? I said, it's on the list. And indeed it is on the list, but it has to be on the list. Now, if you get through all of your five, yeah, you can start working on six through 10, but let's be clear. You want to do these five things really well. You're not, if you haven't done them in the past several years, you're not going to do them, but if you write them down and now you've got these two notebooks, now you're supposed to be consulting who, who is the new Mike in 2023, who is the evolved version of Mike. And this is specifically what you are functionally trying to accomplish. And then within each of these five things, Mike, you will dimensionalize on a separate page. What does it mean defining the project with a sentence or two and writing down the SMART goals? Like specifically, what do you mean you're going to get this done? And this is what you would do at a day job. This is what you would do if you're a producer or a showrunner. This is how things get done. They get done because they're written down. That's all good points. Very good points, but I'm proud of you. Did good. I'm proud of you too, Mike. (laughs) All right. So last but not least, uh, we're going to practice something that's really hard. But um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to ask you to say a word that's on the screen, Mike. One, two, three. No. Is that so hard? It is not hard. It is not hard. But why do people find it to be so difficult? Because you don't want to be a douche by saying no, helping your friends out or whatever it is. And just say you know, you, you need the money, but you don't want to do the job. You don't want to say no. Cause Hey, I might not be able to find another job. It's tough sometimes. It also helps Mike. If you know what things to say yes to True. now, doesn't mean that you don't pivot if there's a good opportunity, but here's the thing. If you've set some personal and professional goals for yourself, and you want to accomplish these and somebody says oh would you like to work on my dream project maybe they're working on their top five list and they need some help and you're like oh well let me let me put my thing to the side so i can work on your thing and oh okay here we go i think Miriam has a really good comment here you go let's turn the page here boop Miriam says, well, people who say no are labeled difficult. You can say no in a nice way. Miriam, you know what? I've heard you say no in the past as well. There's times where you can say to somebody, can you help me with this? You could say, I can't at this time. It doesn't make you difficult, but it does make it clear that you're like, I I just can't at this time. I'm working on this other project that is extremely important to me. And here's why I'm saying no. I would love to help you. And potentially, Mike, maybe in 2024, you will. And maybe, maybe it's something you want to do. And maybe it replaces one of the five things on your list. It could. The the fear that, you know, not saying no is also kind of the fear of missing out. Like if just say I was approached to do a project that I wasn't very excited about, I still might do it just because I'm like, what if this becomes the next SpongeBob? And I missed out on it. It's tough. It's a tough call. You gotta you gotta balance out what you want to do and what you can do, and you know, I guess what you're willing to put into it. Of course, it is important for you to be clear that you have to take something off your list in order to put something new on the list. And and yes. and really five things accomplishing these five things during the calendar year while working a day job is probably the, the best bet is to keep it to about five. Yes. <laughs> and I'll note, you know, one of the reasons that we have things like family and spiritual 
is something that you you said to me when we were working together at Wizard, which was something I'm sure that was the first time anybody had ever said it. You made it up on the spot, which is no one ever. Uh, what was it? No one ever wished on their deathbed that they had put in more hours at work. Yes, some, uh, yeah, something like that. Right. Yeah. And you're welcome. Um, yeah. Hold on. <laughs> A, a, a no becomes a yes to something else. No, yes. good point, Vince. Right. And Vince, a good example is Vince had set himself a goal uh, to participate more in comic book school. To, you know, that was part of his philanthropic approach or whatever Vince's approach was. He created that opener for us. He contributed to the group. And because of it, he also had to not do something else. And we appreciate what he did. And I think it's important. So Maryam notes, yes, and that feeling of being a part of a team. So, yeah, I mean, you may find that you're five. Maybe there's something that you're willing to take off because you want to be part of something that's interesting. This is what we do every week here. It's a commitment. And yeah. I think people have to be willing to commit to what's important to them and reprioritize. And again, when I think about what's important from a family perspective, my you know, you do need to leave yourself a little bit of a buffer. I was talking to one of our members uh, at comic book school and his plan was to work like, you know, 120% every week. Wow. Do, do you, do you want to, do you want to go to the movies? Do you want to, <laughs> is there, <laughs> you want, is there anybody that you'd like to spend more time with? He's like, Oh yeah, I want to do this. And then I go, look, time is finite. You, you really need to be able to be, uh, ruthless about your time protecting it um, and then also being ready to uh, basically say no or no thank you or you know no uh, you know can't work but I think the no will be much easier for people to understand when you let them know hey I've got a full plate I have five projects that I'm working on um, I'm happy to be your biggest cheerleader I'm happy to work you know even collaborate at some point and if it is compelling enough, Mike, you know, look at your list again, go back and say, all right, I'm going to, I'm going to remove item four because I really do want to work on this thing. You know, we've had to both move things off of our list in order to make time for this show. Um, and, you know, we have to say no to certain things. Sure. And it could be no for now. It doesn't mean yes. that no forever. Am I right? Yeah. I just can't do it at this moment. At this moment. Um, so that's that. And now I, this is my graphic I made for you, Mike. Look at that. You added stuff. I added stuff. And I, I yeah, made it my trivia time last week. It was just trivia time. I, I think I hear Erin weeping from <laughs> another part of the country as she sees this graphic. Uh, Mary M is furiously typing saying, why, 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 why? Um, but Mike, I, I think the important thing is, is um, you as a professional writer with many important writing credits and awards, um, you enjoy your trivia, don't you? I do enjoy trivia. And I'm not, I'm not really, well, I guess it could be trivia. This also might be better just as possible ideas, something to put somebody on the direct path of, you know, oh, that's a cool idea. Maybe I can use that. But Trivia works as well. Trivia works. And and Vince Vince is a nice guy. Vince is the kind of guy that like, he's like, good effort. Those yeah. icon graphics are dope. Well, it's got, you know, it's got the light bulb with the thing over your head and the magnifying glass. Yeah, it's, it's good stuff. Question mark. I like Vince. Vince is a nice guy. It's, Vince is from uh, that country. Canada? Canada. 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 They have the uh, the Bob Evans stores. Okay, Mike, today's trivia. I'm going to open up to the trivia to your trivia page. Take it away, Mike. Okay. Did you? Oh, you did. Okay. I actually had to write this down because I didn't know how to pronounce it, so I had to find it. It's uh, Orphiocordyceps unilateralis. This is a fungus that attaches itself to ants, and when it gets embedded there, it actually takes them over and makes them zombies. So the, the, the fungus attaches to them, they climb up into this thing and then they fall down into the, um, like the mulch of the, of the forest and that helps the, the fungus grow more. So I was just thinking if you can take something like that and use it as, you know, for your story or movie or whatever, as some sort of zombie 
um, dust or some sort of mind control thing. Cause you can take anything like that and just twist it just a little bit and make it, you know, whatever you need. So if you want to do a mind control story, some scientist finds this thing and, you know, does some scientific stuff to it, turns it into a mind control dust. So wait, so the, the, the dust, when it attaches itself to the ant zombifies the ant. So yes. the ant is now a zombie. So you could weaponize either the ant or the airborne fungus. Well, it's mostly the airborne fungus because once it attaches to the ant, the ant eventually does die. It just uses the ant to, you know, uh, get more of it to produce more fungus. Wait, so, so it, it's self-propelling? Like the ant now, as he marches around, pushes that fungus around to the other ant, Well, the, the fungus attaches to the ant and then it forces the ant to do whatever it wants, kind of like muscle contractions. Ooh. So it makes the ant climb up certain trees and then fall to the ground where the mulch can help produce more of the fungus, which then disperses and gets onto more ants and Ooh. so on and so forth. It's yeah, it makes the ants into zombies, but the ants eventually do die from it. But yeah, you can make a cool, a cool zombie idea show from the So literally, if if this stuff had you know, it morphed enough. Could it move? It could jump to humans or yeah. animals, uh, destroy forests. And the only way to destroy it is to destroy what the hive, I guess. You'd have to, you'd have to find some way to destroy the fungus, but I mean, fungus, you know, it's all over. All you need is one little dust moat or one little fungus moat and it can all start over again. So there's your, uh, this, this fungus is <laughs> Once you're in, you can't get out. <laughs> Phenomenal writing prompt. Mike. Oh, thank you. Thank you. That is a, that was pretty cool when I found it. It it's kind of it's cool, but it's it it makes me itch a little bit. <laughs> it's a little it is start, a little gonna start creepy. wearing the mask all the time just in case. It is a great writing prompt. So um I hope people like uh these little uh prompts that we put together uh in uh Couple of upcoming episodes, Mike. This is what we'll be we'll be using our notebooks for. The big ones, our, our bigger ones. We didn't get to the bigger ones yet. We're going to get to the bigger ones in the next episode. So uh, next week, Mike, we will be having uh, at least uh, one guest who will be returning. Who was a previous guest. Uh, we'll cover the hardcover, and we will uh, complete this series of how to own. 2023 and and rule it going forward i think uh everybody that's part of the comic book school community uh should be at some point just committing and saying you know what i know it seems silly but i'm going to write this down because um everything else hasn't worked right like if you've ever looked at your news resolutions do you remember what last year's new year's resolutions were you're like i don't i don't know i don't, know. I don't remember but when you write them down and you save the notebooks as i do um, you know, I save everything. The, uh, the, your dreams really do come true. I'm going to, I'm going to write that, that one down under financial owning 2023. <laughs> owning, owning 2023. Okay. So, uh, we're done with our trivia. Thank you for your writing prompt, Mike. And thank you for your contributions, everybody. So next week we'll be talking about creating a habit, a habit and keeping yourself on track and then we'll be uh we'll be done with uh all of the preparation we'll get on uh, back with some guests who are literally they can't well we got a thumbs up it's the first thumbs up of the year mike yeah i don't even know how you give a thumbs up i think that must be on facebook mm, mm. I don't have you don't have facebook <laughs> so uh we did the document your goals for your comic book career, and that's it, Mike. We're, that's the end uh, of the slideshow. That's hold on. That's the end of the slideshow. Let me undo. Uh, stop. All right. So that's it, Mike. That concludes our show. Um, people, uh, I hope you uh, like, subscribe, and share it with uh, friends, enemies, and frenemies. We will see you again on Tuesday. <laughs>